All right, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make a dynamic sphere animation, or that's what I call it anyway. I went ahead and put up a tutorial preview yesterday on my channel. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll provide a link down in the description. You guys can go check it out. Uh, but anyways, I had a few comments saying that I took this from grayscalegorilla.com, and I just want to clear it up and say that that is not the case at all. Uh, so anyways, we're going to get started with this tutorial. And the first thing I'm going to do here is go up to Filter, and turn off the grid because uh, sometimes I find that a little annoying so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and I am working in Cinema 4D R14 in case you any of you guys notice a difference uh, from my previous tutorials uh, so not much has changed I am using the studio version so if you guys are not finding certain things or don't have certain things that I have uh, make sure you're using studio you may have prime or broadcast and uh, some things are left out in those uh, those versions of cinema so anyways uh, once we got our grid turned off I'm just gonna go up to the primitive objects and grab a sphere and I'm gonna change this type from standard to hemisphere I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the segments from 24 to 100 and uh, by default uh, we can't really see our segments and I like to see my segments when I'm working on stuff so I'm gonna go up to display and change this to lines and now we can see all our segments on this sphere so what I'm going to do now is go up to MoGraph, go to Cloner, and we're going to click and drag and drop and make the sphere a child of the cloner, okay? We're going to go ahead and click on Cloner, we're going to change the count to, say, 20, and we're going to change the Y from 50 centimeters to 0, uh, like so. And then with our Cloner selected, we're going to go back up to MoGraph, go to Effector, and let's go ahead and grab a Step Effector, and we're going to go to the Parameter tab on the Step Effector, and let's go ahead and change the scale from 1 to say 0.25 like so and let's go ahead and adjust the rotation so make sure we check that on if we go ahead and give this a quick random rotation here on the pitch uh, you can see now we have a uh, shell looking thing and it actually looks pretty bad right now so let's go ahead and go to our render settings and add an effect and go to ambient occlusion and this will immediately start making things look a little bit better and because we got shadows now this is more defined so we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better so um, let's go ahead and animate this so what I'm gonna do is give ourselves some more frames to work with so instead of having 90 I'm gonna type in 500 down here I'm gonna drag this over uh, so now we got some room to play around so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe the pitch so command or control and left click on the pitch here at zero degrees and we're gonna go to frame 100 and we're just going to give this a nice random rotation and once we've done that we'll make sure we keyframe that and what we're going to do now is go back to frame 40 and we're going to go ahead and keyframe the H here and go ahead a few frames to say frame 120 and we'll give this a random rotation and keyframe that now we'll go back to frame 60 and we'll keyframe the banking or the B here rotation and we'll go to frame 140 and we'll give this a random rotation as well so let's go ahead and play forward and see what we got so we're just creating a simple little animation that looks really dynamic and uh, pretty cool so now what I'm going to do is go to frame 190 and I'm going to change all these values back down to zero and they're all going to turn yellow so what I can do is is just hold shift and select all three of these and then hold command and left click and we can keyframe all three of these at once and if we play what we have uh, this should be pretty cool so let's go ahead and take a look alright so they kinda all rotate and then they go back to their starting position and then let's say at frame 200 we'll make this whole thing just disappear once it stops moving so go to cloner go to basic and we're going to uh, key animate the visible and editor and visible and renderer settings so go ahead and turn these off and you're going to notice that uh, the sphere is going to disappear and uh, we're going to keyframe both of these and then the frame before or actually at the beginning of the animation we're going to turn these on and they're going to turn yellow so let's go ahead and keyframe that and whenever we play this uh, it should go ahead and and do what it's supposed to do and then at frame 200 the sphere is going to disappear like so so now that we have our animation set up basically what we can do is actually duplicate this so if we select the cloner and the step effector if we press command C 
Command V on our keyboard, it'll duplicate that. And we can, let's go ahead and move around in our scene here and we'll pull this up above this one and we'll scale this one down quite a bit. And that's looking not too bad. So I'm gonna pull this up a little bit more so it doesn't intersect with our first sphere. If we go ahead and play this forward, now both of these are doing a similar animation, which is kind of cool. But if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to make change this up, all we'd have to do is go into our step effector, go to parameter. And so all we have to do is go down to each one of these keyframes and hold command and shift and then left click on each one of these. And this is actually going to erase all of our keyframes uh, for the corresponding uh, parameter. So now we can start fresh. So if we go ahead and press uh, play, you'll notice this one is no longer animated and we can get, uh, do something completely different here. So let's go ahead and animate the banking here and we'll go to frame 60 and give this a nice random value, keyframe that, and then we'll go to frame 40 again and we'll play around with the pitch and we'll keyframe that. So I'm just kind of running through this really quickly. And then we'll go here to frame 28 and we'll keyframe the H and then we'll go to frame 100 and we'll keyframe this. And now we've got a totally different animation for our second sphere. We can go to frame 140, put all these back down to zero. And if we just select all these by holding down shift and clicking on each one and then command and left click, we can keyframe those all at once. And so now we have something completely different. So I didn't really take a whole lot of, spend a whole lot of time on trying to do that uh, correctly and make it really look good uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, but you guys can take more time on it and make it look a lot better but that's basically all we're going for so uh, at this point in time we're pretty much ready to go ahead and set up our background and add materials to this and actually right now I'm just gonna go ahead and put all this stuff in a group uh, to group this together so I'm gonna press alt G on my keyboard and that's gonna place all these objects or these two into a null I'm just gonna uh, rename these to dynamic spheres and now all our stuff is in here and uh, everything's still good so I'm actually working on a free material pack for you guys um, so I'm gonna be using one of the materials that I've created and this is this white glow material and I'll be releasing this soon I'm gonna add quite a few more materials to this and I'll hopefully have it out in the next uh, I don't know I'd say pretty soon maybe next few days um, I'm gonna be working on it really hard and uh, it's gonna be free so I'll go ahead and put that up on my channel when it's done and I'll let you guys download it so I'm just gonna be using this material that I've created called it white glow and I'm gonna change each one from the projection from UVW mapping to spherical and uh, we should be good to go if you guys want to create your own material just double click down here and uh, create whatever you want so we can do something random bring the reflection down go to texture for now bring that down and then make the color white and there you go simple simple uh, material that you can apply so I'm just gonna be using one of one of mine that I've created and it already looks pretty nice with the ambient occlusion turned on so let's go ahead and give that a quick render preview so you guys already seen what the material looks like uh, it looks pretty good in my opinion it's not too bad and uh, actually I'm picking up on some grain here in the shadows and I don't really like that so what I'm gonna do is go to my render settings go to ambient occlusion I'm gonna bump up the maximum samples to say 150 and let's bring up the minimum to say like 70 or so and that should help with the grain uh, quite a bit however we are gonna sacrifice some render times for that so um, but uh, that definitely looks uh, quite a bit better so I'm satisfied with that that should work uh, for this and now we just need to set up our background so let's go ahead and go up to the floor icon and let's grab a background and we're gonna create a simple gradient material for this background so double click uh, to create a new material once that new material has been uh, come up uh, just gonna check off specular here go to color go to texture go to gradient and we're gonna click on the gradient box here and we're under uh, the shader tab and we're just gonna change the type from 2 to U to 2d circular and we're gonna make this first knot here 
on the far left side a darker gray like so and then we're going to change this last knot here on the far right and make this a black color so we have kind of a, a dark gray and then it kind of fades off into the black so we kind of have a vignette kind of look we're just going to click and drag that material onto the background and if we go ahead and give this a quick render preview uh, you'll see that so it should look pretty nice okay so that doesn't look too bad uh, we don't even have any lights in here and it already looks uh, fairly decent so we'll go ahead and play ahead a few frames and we'll check this out and make sure everything's looking alright and so for something like this uh, you may not even need uh, lights I mean it depends on what you're what you're going for and how well you want it to look but really as it is with just ambient occlusion checked on and uh, a background this actually doesn't look too bad um, you can take a, this render and put it in After Effects and really make it uh, something special. So I don't think uh, we really need to add any lights into something like this. But what I am going to do is go to Output and make this HD. So I'm going to change my width to 1280 and change the height to 720. And since this is going to be an animation, we can go to select the frame range and make sure we select all frames. Or if we have a certain amount of frames we want to render out, so say to like frame 220. We'll just change that from 500 to 220, and we should be good to go. If you guys wanted to create a light, all we'd have to do is just go up here to the default lights that Cinema 4D has, and let's say grab an area light, and we'll change the shadow from none to area, and we'll go ahead and rotate this light a little bit, and we'll go ahead and pull this back like so. And let's make sure that's, uh, I'm going to go into my top view and make sure that's where I want it. Pull this back some more. What I'm going to do is go into the light, go to uh, details, and I'm going to change the fall off from none to inverse square clamped. And then we can adjust the radius of this by dragging this out like so. Uh, we can change the shadow. So uh, this is going to influence the amount of grain and how the shadows look. So... Uh, you can play around with these settings. If we brought the accuracy down, uh, this would make uh, the shadows look better. If brought the maximum samples up and brought the accuracy down, this would make uh, your shadows look better in case you're getting some grain as well. And yeah, I'm really not going to play around with this too much because I really don't think we need a light for this. Um, it's really not going to do much for us. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so I may just leave that light in there for the heck of it. And uh, that looks pretty good. It's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. And uh, once you're done, I'm just going to go back into our render settings and change the format from TIFF to QuickTime Movie. Uh, you'd go ahead and name your file here and then you know choose where you want to save it. And uh, that should be good. And when you're done, you're just going to hit Render. And it'll go ahead and render this out for you. And this may take a few hours to do, depending on how fast your computer is and, and lots of different var variables. But uh, that should be that. So uh, that's going to do it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you for watching. And hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Uh, please leave a like if you found this helpful. And uh, if you guys have any uh, you know ideas for future tutorials or any suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. And uh, I'll see what I can do. So once again, thank you for watching and peace out.